as we continue our course of study, Faith in Action, the biblical character that we'll study today is David, faithful warrior, David. In order to thin out the herd, the SAS holds one of the most arduous and rigorous selection and training programs in the modern special operations community. From 1994 to 1997, Bear Grylls served in the British Army Reserves with 21 SAS as a trooper, trained in unarmed combat, desert and winter warfare, survival, climbing, parachuting, and explosives. He became a survival instructor. Training is hard, long and very expensive, almost incalculable. Many do not complete it. Take for instance, a basic fighter pilot training, costs over $5.6 million. But for an F-16 pilot, the cost of training is over $10 million. It takes a long time for those that do not have extensive military training to gain enough experience to be recognized as a good soldier. That is, if they are not killed in their first few battles. David was a great warrior who became Israel's greatest and most loved king. He fought nine battles in the course of his life. His military career began when he killed Goliath, but his training began long before then, as we shall soon see. Most sources agree that David was probably between 13 and 15 years old when he killed Goliath a giant fighting champion of the Philistines. We might want to ask ourselves the question, how did he become such a great warrior? The answer is found in his faith in God and faithfulness in finding out and doing the will of God. God trained him. His brothers were the seasoned soldiers in Saul's army. He was only sent to look after sheep. That was where he received his training. He killed the lion and the bear through God's help. He obeyed God and faithfully defended the sheep when nobody would have blamed him if he chose to run away. David trusted God and was not afraid to bravely engage the enemy in conflict. Looking back, the Lord had said to Samuel when he was sent to anoint a new king to replace King Saul, who was still alive and ruling. God said to Samuel, who thought Eliab, the first son of Jesse, looked good with a commanding presence and was about to anoint him. God said, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God, with his omnipotence, chose David, even though David was in the field and not at home in the view of Samuel and so was not in visual consideration. Are these all your sons, seven in all? Samuel asked Jesse. Jesse replied, there is still the youngest. He is tending the sheep. 
when your heart is submitted to God in faith and yieldedness, God knows where you are, even if you are out of sight of those who matter, as we say. David's first and probably his most famous display of being a faithful warrior is detailed in 1 Samuel chapter 17 where David was sent to deliver food for three of his older brothers who were in King Saul's army of Israel and their com army commander at the valley of Elah where they were set to fight the Philistines. As he greeted his brothers and was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion, stepped out and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. But the Israelite soldiers ran from him in great fear. This happened for 40 days before David got there. At this point, the Israelites were saying that Goliath kept coming out to defy Israel twice a day. This amounts to 80 episodes of intense fear for the Israelite soldiers. David, however, saw it a different way. He saw that Goliath was defying the armies of the living God. And the living God in Deuteronomy chapter 20 had destructed Israel, saying, When you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them, because the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt will be the one with you. When you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Hear, O Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not be terrified or give way to panic before them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight. He will fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. It seemed as if only David remembered this and chose to take on Goliath, a giant of a man. This is despite David's eldest brothers verbally abusing him, accusing David of abandoning the sheep in the desert and having a conceited and a wicked heart. King Saul also said that David was only a boy and that he could not defeat Goliath because Goliath had been a fighting man from his youth. In response to this attempted discouragement and abuse, David only referenced what God had done for him as God delivered him from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He was confident that God will also defeat, help him defeat Goliath because Goliath was defying the army of the living God. David refused to put on the conventional war outfit of the day that saw war and he offered David. Instead, he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. As Goliath the Philistine came towards David, cursing him by his gods, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and despair and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air 
and to the beast of the earth and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. That was exactly what happened. What a heart, what a boy, what a lover and follower of God, what a display of God's will as he stood in the shadow of the Almighty. What a follower of God's word, refusing that opposition from family, king and enemy will thwart God's plans and diminish from God's glory. We can learn much from David. We'll just take a few points here. God trains and prepares each one of his willing and faithful children for the spiritual and moral conflict that we'll certainly face in this world from spiritual forces of evil who also use humans to do evil work. Thank God for the challenges you face or have faced in the past. Trust him to always show you how to overcome and he will help you to overcome if you are willing, faithful and obedient like David. As you overcome each challenge through faith and obedience to God, you will grow in confidence and will be in a better position to deal with new challenges as they come. Another point we'll look at here, learning from David, we mu is that we must not give in to fear. David was a great warrior because he did not give in to fear. Remember what Jesus said to the disciples in John 14, 27. Peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Also in John chapter 16 verse 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Also, we must not be selfish or self-centered. Such people do not care about others. They choose self-preservation instead of trust in God and obedience to Him, so that they can be trusted or used to bless others. They end up gaining nothing that matters. In Matthew 16, 24 to 27, what Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul for the son of man is going to come in his father's glory with his angels and then he will, he will reward each person according to what they have done we continue to thank god you know for there is trust in God to obey him. David obeyed God even though it meant putting his life on the line for the sake of others. He gained not just his life but so much more in this life 
and for all eternity. David depended on God to lead him throughout his life. He fought only the battles that God directed him to. The biggest mistakes he made in his life was when he acted out of his own desires and self-interest and went against God's laws. He took another man's wife and had him murdered in order to cover up his sin. He finally came to his senses when confronted by a prophet. He deeply repented and was restored. Repentance is very important. Many people, including those who claim to be believers, do not face their wrongdoing squarely as David did. Some people will just say, let's get on with it. No, you have to repent. There is no way forward except through repentance. Repentance may involve making things right. It is not complete if the person does not resolve to make every effort to go on living in obedience to God with the help of the Holy Spirit. That is after turning away from the evil and asking God to forgive them. We thank God for the opportunities he continues to give us. As we conclude this talk on faithful warrior that David is an example of in the Bible, I want to read two Bible passages. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take on the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Friends, brothers and sisters, put on the full armor. Don't wage war as the world does. If you listen to this message and you have questions, please contact King's Church at office at kcspc.org.uk Thank you very much. God bless you.